Real estate is a ton of work. Why does every single thing you try to do take at least three times longer than you expect it to? And meanwhile, every top producer on the internet seems like they have it all figured out. So what do you do when you want to sell more? But let's be real, work just a little bit less. Well, today's guest is Eric Hatch out of Fargo, North Dakota. And as an agent, he's personally sold over 150 homes per year. As a team leader, his team has sold over 1,000 homes per year. And as a coach, Eric is helping others do the same. Eric is also an author and a speaker, sharing the stage with some of the biggest names in our industry. And here's what to expect to learn in today's show. Why you should not start a team. The only three things you need to be doing every day before noon, the low-hanging fruit that you're not capitalizing on when it comes to leads, and stick around to the end for exactly when it's time to hire. You're listening to the Real Estate Rockstars podcast, the show for agents who've been around the block and are finally ready to build sustainable, scalable businesses, one that you don't secretly hate or want to escape from. My name is Shelby Johnson. I'm an Army veteran turned real estate entrepreneur, and I've closed hundreds of transactions as a solo agent, team leader, and investor before hitting complete and utter burnout. And now, years later, I'm making a comeback, building my agent business from the ground up in a brand new city, Lexington, Kentucky. More on that journey coming soon. But for today, get ready to learn how to earn a million dollars a year working 10 hours or less a week. Rockstars, welcome Eric Hatch. Okay, Eric, you're telling me that I can earn a million dollars a year working 10 hours a week. And I'm like, Eric, no, you're full of it. So tell me, what's the deal here? Uh, I can earn a million dollars a year working one hour a week with a with Dude. a real estate business, but I think I thought people would cry uh, cry foul on that, and you're crying foul <laughs> on even ten hours a week. But let me tell you this: is uh, I have gone to the highest of highs and the lowest of lows when it comes to building a real estate career. Like you name it, I've done it. Part time agent, check, did it. Uh, a buyer agent on a team, check. Solo agent, check. New team, check. Kicked out of a brokerage and failed miserably and fell flat on my face, check. Rebuilt a team at an independent brokerage, check. Opened up my own brokerage, check. Did this team thing. I've been out of production for like 10 years and I've made a thousand mistakes. My team has sold over 7,000 houses in the last decade. We've seen some good things and some bad things. And I see most people in this business lose their life in pursuit of more. And I'm here to tell you that with the right nuance pieces, you don't have to lose your life in the pursuance of more. You can get better by being more strategic and you can get more time, more money, and the best people when you just follow a few really key steps. And that's what I have for you today. I'm already pumped. I'm like so ready for this. You're speaking my language. I love strategy. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Uh, It starts with a personal production business. Your sales as a realtor are like the key that's going to unlock the life that you want. And most people think starting a team is your way to make a million bucks to sell a thousand homes and and, uh, work 10 hours a week. And I have to tell you, as somebody who has uh, done it myself, and I coach some of the top teams in the industry, having a team for most people is a complete and total bait and switch. You think it's going to get you more time and you think it's going to make you more money. But let me name this with you, okay? Let's say I crush sales. And if I ever want to start a team, I better be great at sales first. But let's say I crush sales. So I have five quality at-bats, each one worth $10,000 worth of commission. Well, that's 50 Gs, right? That 50 Gs, if I go and close it, that's a ton of cash. But the mentality is, well, what if I just hire some agents and I put them on a 50-50 split? And if I hire some agents, they're going to come in and they're going to take those five at bats and they're going to close all five of those. So they're going to make 25,000 bucks and I'm going to make 25,000 bucks. So I just need 40 of those people and I'll make a million dollars. There's no way on God's green earth that that new agent or that team agent who is in this is going to sell five out of five. And they're not going to sell four out of five. They're not going to sell three out of five. Maybe they're going to sell two out of five. They're going to sell one out of five. And guess which, guess which finger I leave held up when I do that countdown? 
is good old middle finger to say that was a terrible idea because I just gave an agent five or 10,000 bucks and I just lost 40 or $45,000. A team for most people is terribly inefficient. So then you say, well, how much time am I going to have to put in to help this person get to where they want to get to? And that is an inordinate amount of time that very few people are willing to sacrifice. But I've done it. I've, I've gone to the depths, but it all started with personal production. Until you master personal production, you shouldn't grow a team. And to master personal production is not a crazy hard equation. I love breaking big things down into simple bite-sized pieces. And I used to say, let's help an agent figure out how they win the day. And most agents I know are too ADD, distracted, and uh, busy with all of these things that they're chasing that they fail to just win the morning. I don't need you to win the day. Let's just win the morning. And in fact, I need three hours of your time every day. And if you do those three hours, this is real estate 101. But people try to get to doctorate level real estate without doing real estate 101. And it doesn't work that way. You want to make a million bucks in 10 hours a week? Do 101 really well. And here's what that looks like, Shelby. The very first part of your day is role playing and training every single day, five days a week. It is irresponsible how many realtors are practicing on their clients. We right now are in the heart of all of these changes with NAR and all of these new, like, I got to get a buyer under contract now and I got to figure out my commitment. Like, people are stressed out to the gills. But what if they practiced for 45 to 60 minutes a day? This becomes a non-issue because you have sharpened your sword every single time. Now, hear me out. There's three things that are going to determine someone's success. It's effort, it's skill, and it's opportunity. I don't care how much effort you have. I don't care if you spend 95 hours a day lead generating. If you don't have any skill, it doesn't matter. If you're knocking on the wrong doors, if you're calling the wrong people, and then you're calling, bumbling, fumbling, stumbling, and tumbling your way through, it's completely and totally irresponsible for somebody to think that they're actually going to close a deal because you didn't spend the time on sharpening your sword. And the very first thing you should do to win the morning, if you want to win the morning, you win the day, you win the quarter, you win the year, and then you make a million bucks. And that all starts with practicing and role playing every day. I'm on a heater, so I'm going to take a breath. Whew. Dude, I am so here for all of it. Um, and I don't know if I should just let you because I feel like you're you're on the rant and get it out and then I, we can circle back for questions or would you rather me ask questions as we go? Yeah, feel free to interrupt. Feel free to let me go. I don't care. Like you put a quarter in me. So I'm just, uh, by the way, it's not like a dog. It used to be put a, you're, Shelby, you're too young. You don't know what it's like to go to like a game and you put a quarter in and you play. No, you got to put a dollar in now. So you put a quarter in me, you put a dollar in me. Either way, I'm going to keep going. Okay, so, gotcha. Yeah, go, go. go. So we're, we're, we're winning the morning, right? We're doing real estate 101 in the best of ways. So we're winning the morning. It starts with role play. And that's the first thing that you do. You practice, you train, and you do it over and over. But let me say this. Here's what most people do with role play. They go about it and they say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this scenario and then I'm going to call it good. But that's as irresponsible as me going golfing, taking one swing and considering myself practiced. That's like taking a teenage kid putting them behind the wheel, watching them drive around the block and saying, okay, now you got it. It's irresponsible. The best kind of role play I've ever seen works like this is you and I will work out a scenario. You'll play the part of the client. I'll play the part of the realtor. When it's done, I'm going to first evaluate myself. Shelby, here's what I thought I did well. Here's where I really struggled. Then you are going to say, Eric, here's what I thought you did well. Here's where I thought you struggled. Because I don't need you to tell me something that I'm already aware of. I'm instead seeing, am I self-aware? Am I cognizant of my strengths and my weaknesses? Because if I am, you're just going to say, hey, you are exactly spot on. These are the things that you need to work on. And this is where you excel. But here's number three is you do it again. You drive around the block again. You take another practice swing again until it becomes great. And most people 
are doing an open house scenario to role play one day a week. And then two weeks later, when you go and role play again, then you're role playing a new buyer consult. And then three weeks later, you're, you're taking a seller objection and you're not doing it until it becomes mastery. You're just doing it to do it. So if you're going to role play, that's why you do it five days a week. And honestly, it's like one topic for a week or two or three or four until it becomes painfully boring because mastery is boring. Okay. Number two. Oh, yes. Yeah, number me. two. Go, go, go. Okay. Uh, I, I was going to say number two, after you role play and role play is again, 45 minutes is you lead generate. Lead generation is seed planting. It is not seed harvesting. This is where most realtors get it wrong. Seed planting are creating new real estate conversations with people that have not yet conversed with you about real estate. This is the most important thing you do after training and development every day. Because you could go, you could jump right into, into lead generation, but if you haven't sharpened your sword, you're going to take a lot of extra swings. And so now that you're in lead generation time, I, I remember I'm a former KW agent and I have nothing but love for KW. And I remember listening to Gary Keller on the main stage say things like, you got to lead generate for three or four hours a day. And Shelby, I don't know many people that are in marathon shape. I, I've, I've ran a marathon, humble break number one. I've ran a marathon uh, half a lifetime ago. And as I ran that marathon, it took me four and a half hours. Now, if I ran a marathon and it took four and a half hours, I'm not running tomorrow or the next day. I'm icing. I'm, I'm sucking my thumb. I'm curled up in the corner crying because it was so exhausting, even when you're in marathon shape. Marathoners don't run a marathon every day. So I'd much rather have somebody do 60 minutes of intentional and intense lead generation. I want them to go in with a plan. Now, I've never done CrossFit because I don't have a bad back yet. But here's what happens when you do CrossFit is CrossFit does what's called a, a WOD, a workout of the day. You show up and a trainer, an expert says, here's who you're going to, like, here's the workout that you're going to do. Here's the number of reps you're going to do. And here's what the cadence of the day looks like. And they have a plan for you. And people leave dripping in sweat saying, that was a hell of a workout. It was a 45 to 60 minute intense workout. But are we treating lead generation that same way? Do we go in with a plan of who are we going to contact? How are we going to contact them? And why are we going to contact them? We call this an RWAD in our world, a realtor workout of the day. In fact, the free giveaway that we have with you, Shelby, is the RWAD for everyone. So you can take this plan, this lead generation plan, and you can go ahead and implement it into your world. So it becomes a CrossFit workout. You show up and you know what you need to do. And you do it until it becomes so habitual. Now, all of a sudden, you spent an hour of intensity. I don't want two or three or four hours of distractions. I don't need Karen walking by chatting about the weather. And I don't need somebody popping in to ask me about an inspection contingency removal. This is the most important time of this morning. And I'm going to use it with no distractions. I need an hour of intensity, not three hours of dilly-dallying. Now. Number three, you role played, you lead generated, now is lead follow up. And lead follow up are not for clients that you are currently showing homes to or listing their property. This lead follow up are people that you've had real estate conversations with, but you're not yet in a contracted relationship with. And this is another hour. So we had 45 minutes, 60 minutes and 60 minutes. We're at two hours and 45 minutes. This hour of lead follow-up time is your chance to massage. This is your chance to know you're not calling a large database. You have a small pool of nurtures. You're waiting to see, is this ready to go to harvest? This is a different nuance than lead generation. This is longer conversations, fewer at-bats. This is setting yourself up so that you can move that person into a contracted relationship. Most agents make the mistake of doing lead generation and lead follow-up as the same thing, but they're different skills. It's like cardio and lifting weights. It's different skills, and you shouldn't do them both at the same time or you're going to fall and stumble. Now, the final 15 minutes when you get all that done is to plan your ROI for the next day and to plan your lead follow-up for the next day and to plan your role play for the next day. It takes but 15 minutes. But if you don't have a plan, how are you ever going to win? 
how do you even know if you won? And so if you like, there's, there's so many other nuanced pieces that we're going to get to, but if you want to make a million bucks in 10 hours a week, it starts with the basics. And I've heard for years now, well, we just have to get back to the basics and we just have to do, nobody even knows what the basics are. The basics are winning the morning with role play, lead generation, and lead follow. Eric, how do I even follow that? I'm like, what just happened? I feel like a tornado went through. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you should feel sorry for my wife. Oh my Yeah. Yeah, poor lady. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that makes sense. I'm here, I'm with you. And I really do appreciate the differentiating of the lead generation versus the lead follow-up because you're totally right. I feel like a lot of us tend to just clump this thing we call lead gen. And within that clump, we don't know whether we're posting something on social, whether we're writing emails or texting or calling. And it's it just becomes so convoluted that we end up being like, well, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll do this yeah. like lead gen thing. You know, there there has to be a strategy behind everything. And, and uh, I try to keep things in threes, but I have a category that's four because people are always saying, well, where do you get this business from? Like, that's great. You're, you're going to go ahead and, and tell me what I need to do with my time, but who do I contact? And for me, there's four different types of business that you can get. The first is PCSOI. That's past client and sphere of influence. So these are people that you are already in a relationship with that you know, like, and trust. Uh, the book that Gary Keller wrote called MREA, the millionaire real estate agent, uh, which is like a Bible for building a real estate business. And it's a super powerful resource. He talks about the conversion rate of Mets versus have not Mets. Mets, somebody who's a PCSOI, past client, your sphere of influence. He says that you have a two in 12 chance at getting business from that person. And I've always, I always wondered like, why is it not one in six? Like, didn't you pay attention to like breaking your fractions down? Uh, and instead, the reason why it's two in 12 is because for every 12 people in your database, one of those 12 should do business with you. And one of those 12 should refer you annually. And so if you want to know where the most potent punch is, where your greatest chance at conversion is, it's with your PCSOI. So where do you focus your lead generation on? Well, you focus on your PCSOI first. I think that business earned is always better than business bought. Now, I'm going to bookend this, Shell, because on on one side is PCSOI. Next is low-hanging fruit. Low-hanging fruit is expensive business. I'm talking agent referrals. I'm talking Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, Homelight, Dave Ramsey. Anything that's going to cost you a lot of money is low-hanging fruit. And hear me loud and clear, low-hanging fruit is an irresponsible way to build your business. It can be a leg of the stool, but if it's the only leg that you have, somebody else owns your business, you don't. I've used that leg of the stool to accelerate short-term growth, but it is not a sustainable bite. The third way that you can go and get business is with long-term nurtures. Long-term nurtures would be pay-per-click leads, a a low cost per impression. Uh, Did you know, by the way, we've, we've tracked on our real estate team, the conversion times for a Zillow lead and a pay-per-click lead from the time in which it hits our inbox until it becomes a closed transaction. Zillow converts seven to 12% of the time, and it closes between 90 and 120 days on average. So seven to 12%. And 90 to 120 days. A pay per click lead costs us eight to 15 bucks a lead, whereas Zillow lead is 300 to a thousand dollars a lead, right? A pay per click lead uh, can convert 4%, but it takes 630 days on average. So imagine you're a new realtor or someone who needs to get a paycheck soon. It's so easy why you would chase after low hanging fruit, but the long term nurture is a much more sustainable bite. But here's here's the math on it because it requires a system. It requires a cadence. It requires the right steps in order for it to actually turn into 4%. Because in the first year, the first 365 days, 1% likelihood of it closing. The next year, day 366, so what is that? Day 700 or so, another 2%. And then day 700 and beyond is another 1%. And so, so many people give up and stop working before it hits year two, when when like it literally doubles your chance of converting that lead. Other things that are lo- uh, long-term nurtures would be like farming a neighborhood. 
uh, and, and working that sort of strategy. But my favorite type of business, and Shelby, I heard you allude to it very briefly, is reputation business. This is social media. This is reviews. This is your YouTube channel. This is your community involvement. It's where someone knows of you as a personality and they already trust you. Now, I'm 44 years old. And so that means that uh, I am a boomer. Is that, is that how math works? I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I started my career and getting really great exposure on the radio. And I still do the radio because it still plays for us. But we've also transitioned to now YouTube and we've transitioned to being really intentional on social media. And we've always been involved in community engagement. And most realtors, when they're looking at these strategies, are like, how do I make money today? Your greatest chance at making money today, your lead generation time should be with the first two sources I gave you. PCSOI, because those people hopefully are going to move soon and you already have established relationships with them. By the way, have not met. I told you Mets are two and 12. Have not met. One in 50, 2%, 2% for have not mets. And so you want to know where you put your energy towards and you have to put it towards people that already know you or they're raising their hands. So that's PCSOI and low hanging fruit. That's where you need to put your energy in the beginning part. But it's irresponsible to not build a longer business. And it's irresponsible to not plant the seeds on low hanging fruit. And it's irresponsible not to plant the seeds on reputation business. But if you're an agent who's new to this, or if you're an agent who needs some more momentum, you going and making another TikTok or YouTube video or reel isn't going to make the phone ring. Lead generation on the right sources is going to make the phone ring. So yes, do those video things, do that social media stuff in addition to but not in place of. Okay. That is, I was going to ask that. That means you take extra Yeah. So time. going back to the top, yep, yep. because it, I take really detailed notes, by the way. So I have, you know, our, our three sections in the beginning, we have the role play, we have the lead generate, and then we have the lead follow-up. So when we are in the lead generate, where it's like the seed planting, you're creating those new real estate conversations with people that you have not yet conversed with about real estate. This, you mentioned, this is... So you're saying this is not where we're content creating. No, your, your, your question is so valid because we all view lead generation differently. And until you have earned a business that consistently brings forth business, your lead generation needs to look more traditional. The quickest way I know to get business is going to be dialing the phone and having as many real estate conversations as possible. A video and a social media post is a real estate presentation, not a conversation. The goal should be to have as many conversations as possible, which means phone calls, text messages, direct messages, uh, video messages, that sort. That should be the fundamental base of what people should be doing. Now, I, I told you I built my business with, with radio as one of the players. Social media was one of the players as well. And I want to be really, really clear on that. I've been intentional on social media. I'm a former youth pastor. And so I went where the children were and I went to the old Facebook and, you know, I, I, I did these things where I could connect with kids and I made sure that I did two things. And this is where I think many people fall short is they are both attractive Meaning you're putting out great content and value and you're, you're showcasing and highlighting who you are. You're telling great stories. You're saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. But the people that win on social media, they win in direct messages and they win in conversations. They win when somebody comments on their stuff, they now have moved to that person's inbox and are going back and forth. They win when they see that Shelby just had a birthday and I don't just post a generic happy birthday on your wall. I instead pick up the phone and I call you because social media is meant to be taken offline. It's meant for conversation. So those that win at social media, yes, you maybe present yourself well. It's not even necessary. Because you can show up in somebody's DMs and their inbox so easily and you make that other person feel pretty. How do you think I landed my wife who's a smoke show? I landed my wife as a smoke show because I made her feel pretty, not because I was pretty. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense because there are so many agents out there who they might even be doing it super consistently and doing everything they're supposed to do in regard to like content creation creation and doing that presentation you mentioned and being attractive, but without, with just putting that out and then just waiting and hoping that someone contacts them, it's a totally different mindset than putting that out and then engaging and 
pushing forward the conversation in the movement of that relationship by like grabbing it by the horns and sliding into their DMs, really. Yeah, let's let, let's uh, let's put some clear language on this because you brought a really great clarity piece for me here. Lead generation needs to be conversations. Everything that you do leading up to that is a way in which to prime the pump for conversations. Priming the pump is in addition to, not in place of. And so you can prime the pump by being engaging, but it's much better for you to be engaged. That's how you're going to win with lead generation. Okay. So at this point, I'm I'm winning the morning. I am waking up. I'm doing my role play. Yeah. I am doing my lead generation. So that means that I'm having conversations, not the priming piece. And then the next piece is that following mm-hmm. up with you know clients that you're not already working with, but you've already had that real estate conversation with. And I understand at this point who to contact and that my best yeah. use of time is my past client sphere of influence. Okay. At this... I think there was one more. Well, because I don't... Because I'd rather you go after Mets. And then the next group for you to go after, if you're financially investing in your business, uh, would be low hanging fruit because you're going to need to stimulate and get some momentum going because you got to get a little bit of cash flowing. But I, I hate buying success. I'd much rather earn success, but sometimes you have to, uh, you have to manufacture that momentum by buying something. Okay. So, and I think that those pieces are what's adding up to my 10 hours a week to earn that million dollars in a year. Mm-hmm. So what else, what are the other pieces? What else do I need to be considering? Or what did we miss in regard to those 10 hours to hit this million dollars? Yeah. We're, I, I want to be clear is, is it's going to be more than 10 hours until it's 10 hours. There. And so there is, there is a season for everything. And had we, had we talked about, well, first work 60 hours a week to then work 10 hours. Like that's just not a great title. So we're, we're going to go with, we're going to, we're going to go with the flow here and I, I'm going to make some assumptions. Okay. If you win the morning and you spend your time getting better and lead generating and lead following up, and then you're doing so focusing on the right people, it should lead to, let's say three closings a month. Regardless of my, if you're in like Orange County, California, I got a guy coach in Orange County. His average sales price is like one and a half million bucks. Screw him, first of all, because I live in North Dakota and our average sales price is three hundred thousand dollars, and he's prettier and tanner than I am. But I, I, regardless, if you're doing two to three deals a month, you now have a business that's ready to scale. And now we have to figure out if you're still winning the morning, how do you scale the right way? Because this is where almost everybody gets it wrong. This is where real estate teams go from boom to doom. This becomes troublesome because they think I'm going to go and hire a bunch of agents. And we go back to that issue of it, it costs you forty to forty-five thousand dollars to have one agent make five to ten thousand dollars. And now you're using all your time to train them. And so instead of building and hiring somebody to do what you do and trying to duplicate you, you need to leverage you. That is the rock hard line in the sand. In fact, I wrote a book on it called The Perfect Real Estate Agent Blueprint. And it's the blueprint of how you build this life that we're talking about. So hire number one is an admin and not a part-time admin, a full-time admin, not a virtual assistant, an in-office admin. These are non-negotiables for me because you need time back in your life. There's no doubt in my mind that if you are currently doing 36 transactions a year, that you're working 40 to 60 hours a week, no doubt in my mind, but you're spending 20 or 30 hours a week doing $20 an hour work. You're spending time doing transaction coordinating and runner responsibilities, and you're doing your own grocery shop. Oh, excuse me. I just burped. That was really... Dude, everything goes here, Eric. It's a safe place. We're good. Uh, Thank you. I I feel good. Uh, So if you're doing all those things, it's time to get leverage in your life. Your first hire is to help you breathe. And this person at 40 hours a week is going to cost you 40 or 50,000 bucks. And people are like, how in the world am I going to pay for this? I think that any good admin should be a four to one return on your investment. So if you are $10,000 per commission and you hire somebody at $50,000 a year, at four times the the return, you have to make $200,000. So you got to sell 20 extra houses. But you can't tell me that if you bring somebody in and they work for you 40 hours a week, 
that in that time that you were given, you can't go and cultivate and curate more business. This person is to help you breathe. They're taking off the responsibilities of buying your your spouse a gift and going to the vet to get your pet and running that errand and then doing so much communication with your clients and allowing you to focus on your highest dollar income producing activity, which is real estate conversations. If you don't have real estate conversations, you can't get more real estate. And so keep yourself in that high skill set spot. Now, the next hire, people are like, well, now it's an agent. Now it's a buyer agent. No, it's not. It's not. It's another admin. You're like, Eric, you mean to tell me I have to hire two admin? I mean, yeah, because we have to start thinking about this like a business person. Realtors are afraid of hiring an admin, but they're so easily ready to bring on an agent. When that agent costs them hundreds of thousands of dollars in missed opportunity and so much time where the admin literally gives you back time and helps you to go make more money. The mindset of realtors is broken. And so another admin, this second person can be a VA or they can be an office. Their leader is admin hire number one, not you. You're only leading one person. This person is now helping you to grow. First person helps you to breathe. Second person helps you to grow. And now that means they're doing extra touches for your clients. They're helping with your marketing reach. Uh, They're creating new systems and accountability pieces. And they're uh, helping to massage some long-term nurtures. And they're working on your YouTube channel. Like, See, they're now taking... Because you created the foundation. They're now building out this next piece of business. And let's say, let, let's just speak in, in layman's terms that each one of these admin didn't help you to sell 20 more houses. Each one helped you to sell 15. But you went from 36 to 51. And then you went from 51 to 66. And let's do some really simple math here, okay? If you're making $10,000 in commission and you sell 66 homes, you're paying one admin $50,000. You're say you're paying your VA a third of that. You're now at a $600,000 of top line revenue. Now, maybe you're going to have some other expenses like office space and marketing things and that sort. But, and then, yeah, you're going to pay your brokerage too. But I think you're keeping almost a half million dollars in your pocket by having a really small team. Instead of going wide, you're going deep because you're the skill set. You as the agent are the skill set. And if you want massive time back in your life, you got to stack deep, not wide. And so now all of a sudden, this person's selling 66 homes a year, they're netting $500,000, but they're still working 40 or 50 hours a week. So now here's the one thing that you can do to magically work 10 hours a week and make a million bucks. This next hire is the, the difference maker. This is the agent partner hire. People say, should I hire a buyer agent? No. Uh-uh. Should I hire a showing partner? I think language matters. So no, I'm not going to call this a showing partner, although that's many of their responsibilities. This is an agent partner. Shelby, if I introduce you as my partner, people think you and I are either married or we're business partners, or you just walked into a saloon and there's not room enough for both of us in this town. Like that's what partner means for people. People don't think it's the saloon. And so they're like, and I'd say, this is my business partner, Shelby. Immediately, that brings validity to the introduction, doesn't it? If I say this is my showing assistant, that all of a sudden chops you down a peg in the leg. And I need you to believe that you are more talented and capable than the title that you have. And I need the clients to believe that they're more talented and capable in your hands than just in mine. And so the language we use matters. Your job as an agent partner are three responsibilities. The very first is to leverage me. And you are a licensed agent. You are a realtor. And so you are showing up earning commission. You're showing up and there, there's two different models. You can either earn uh, commission only or you can earn a salary plus commission. I'm not here to endorse either one. I'm simply here to say you can choose how you choose to do this. But you as a licensed agent, you are the nurse to me being a doctor. You are doing all the showings, the majority of the client communications. You are the favorite, but I'm here for surgery. So I'm here to get the clients under contract. I'm here to do the heavy negotiations and the heavy lifting of this. 
you have a lot of responsibilities with just leveraging me because you and I are now doing from 66 deals a year up to 100 deals a year. Now, the next move is really easy. The next move is your job is to train and develop. So first was to leverage me. Second is to train and develop. You're my future talent on my team. You're leveraged for me today, but you're my future talent. So when I throw you to the wolves and you have five out of five at bats, you're going to close four or five of those because it's financially irresponsible for me to throw great at bats and opportunities to someone else. In fact, Shelby, we as realtors, we take an oath in our code of ethics saying that we have a fiduciary responsibility to do what's right for our clients at all times. But if I throw a new unseasoned agent standing alone at a buyer or a seller, I've now insulted and disregarded that that code of ethics. Like I can't with confidence say new kid who's never sold a house before, you're in great hands. Like I, I can't do that. And so we have to we have to elevate this game here. We have to eliminate an 87% failure rate in this industry by how we put people in positions to win and to fail. And so the second thing is to train and develop. The third is my agent partner's job is to lead generate. In fact, if they ever want to graduate from this position, they need to be a lead generator. They need to be somebody who can show that they can feed themselves. I see an irresponsible amount of businesses that's just purchased business for the Rainmaker or the team members. And rare do I see people coming in saying, I killed it myself. I hunted. And most people aren't even designed to hunt. High S's aren't designed to hunt. And 69% of the world on the disc profile are high S's. And so they're not designed to hunt. But I need to show that you at least have a little bit of hunger because otherwise I'll just keep you in this role. And this role is going to pay you fine. It's going to be predictable income, but I'm going to be the hunter because I'm the one that can go and slay it. Now, when you do this, guess what? You got a million bucks waiting for you. And here's what happens. I told you at 66 deals, you were making uh, and keeping half a million bucks and you were working 40 hours a week. That's $250 an hour. Your life is now $250 an hour. That's a pretty good life. You bring on this agent partner and you'll go from 66 deals in the course of a year or two, you're going to go to a hundred deals. And at $10,000 a deal, that's a million bucks, it's a million dollars. And I think you're going to get back half your time. You might need to bring on a second showing partner. You might need to bring on uh, another agent or maybe your showing partner or your, or your agent partner, excuse me, graduates to being a buyer agent on your team. So your team may manifest itself a little bit. But regardless of how it manifests itself, all of a sudden now you've gotten back to your time because you're not doing showings. You're not working nights and weekends. You're at every one of your kids' uh, choir performances and sports activities, and you're traveling around the world. And I know this because I've done this and I've lived this and I've helped hundreds of other agents do the same. And it just means you got to win the day. And to win the day, you win the morning. And once you win the morning and you know who to concentrate on, you got to build it the right way and don't go wide, go deep with your business. The other side of that is working 10 hours a week and making a million bucks. Very cool. All laid out. Love it. Question on the agent partner part. I, I think that the titling for that, very smart business partner, as opposed to showing assistant, like the psychology that it works on the client as well as on the agent, like makes total sense. You mentioned um, graduation into being a buyer's agent. So I guess for this agent partner, I'm thinking about like longevity because I, way back in the day, I had a team, a too big of a team. I, I was the exact person that you were talking about. I had a great for, I 48 deals my very first year as a solo agent, made a lot of noise in my community. There were people coming out of the yeah. woodwork being like, we want to be a part of this. Like, what are you doing? And I, you know, I read the millionaire real estate agent, Gary Keller, read it. And I was like, you know what? That's it. I am supposed to yeah. do a team. Right. And so I'm just explaining that. So I, I have like some experience in this and I'm curious about like the graduation process of that mm -hmm. partner. So there's not that turnover. So you create a path for someone to grow within. And what is, can you elaborate on that piece? In 2009 and 2010, I was an agent on a, I was a buyer agent on a team. And 
I all of a sudden became our top agent. I was, I was a part-timer because I was still full-time in the ministry and I was a part-timer, but I outperformed everybody else. And I, I had doubled their sales. And I went to uh, the, the owners of the team and I said, Hey, I'd love to figure out how I can earn a higher commission on the deals that I bring in. And I'd love to figure out uh, how I can start working on listings as well. Cause I have a lot of my sphere that wants to list. And their answer was simply no. They said, no, that's not how we're built. I lasted another 45 days on that team before I left because there was no runway for me. There was no ability for me to earn the next step. It was just a box that I was supposed to live in. And so I understood very early on that I always had to showcase a way that I needed to tell people yes when. Everything in my life, uh, especially for building my team, is uh, revolved around this yes when mentality. I had an agent uh, who was on my team and in 2014, in his first year, he sold 49 houses. I didn't say that to one up you. I just wanted sure. to be clear that sure. uh-huh. he said 50, but it was 49. And he came to me and he's like, Eric, can I earn a higher cut on my sphere? Uh, if, if I keep bringing in deals, he had brought in, I think, 14 or 15 deals from his sphere that first year, which is awesome. And my answer wasn't no, because if I said no, he would have left. My answer was yes, when I said, well, if you bring in 20 deals on deal 21 and beyond for the remainder of that year, I'll pay you a higher split on your sphere. Well, he brought in like 23. And wouldn't you know, he went on to sell, I think like 95 homes in his best year, right? Like uh, this yes, when compounded this opportunity. So let's take it to this agent partner piece. When an agent starts as a partner, we're eliminating that 87% failure rate in this industry. We're literally eliminating it because now they are side by side with a real estate ninja, with a top producer, with somebody who knows what they're doing. And I'm going to make sure that they get stability in a career that's usually really unstable. I think I think when a realtor comes into the industry, they should expect the first six months to make $0. If you come in as a partner, you're going to make a check in the first 45 days. And so now all of a sudden, you've changed that uncertainty for them. You're giving them stability. And here's why this agent partner role is so great. It's number one, the agent wins because they get their doctorate, they get their MBA in real estate by aligning themselves with a top producer like you or me. Number two, the client wins because they get two for the price of one. They get two agents in a market where speed matters and flexibility matters and, and, and getting two people to say, well, if I can, this person will. Getting that kind of coverage matters and, and clients demand that today. And number three is I, as the rainmaker, I, as the, the main agent, I win because I'm literally doubling my time. I, I, I caught a TikTok, which is where I get my news. I caught a TikTok the other day where the guy said, uh, you know, it's, it's baloney that somebody says you only have 24 hours in a day. He said, I have 824 hours in a day because I got a hundred people that work for me and they each give me eight hours a day. And then I got 24 of my own. And so leverage is that thing, right? And, and if I want a great life, I have to start figuring out leverage. And we have to start thinking in that sort of way. So let's go now to this, to this graduation, this yes when for the agent partner. In our world, we simply say, once you've done the job for a minimum of a year, you've shown competency in the role, and you've brought in at least 10 deals from your own procuring. That could be referrals, that could be open houses, that could be from your sphere, that could be you converting from the pond. It doesn't matter. You've shown that you can convert those, and you've checked all three of those boxes You have the choice. And so understand that that's earned, not given. Everything on a team should be earned. It shouldn't be given. Mistake number one that so many teams make is they just give it and hope that they earn it later. Mistake number two is you don't create the yes when opportunity of the path. And so here's the path for an agent partner. They can choose one of three. What do you know? It's three again. Uh, They can choose to be a lifer. Shelby, I like a lifer in this role because what they're saying is I want to be close to the power source. That sounds egotistical, but it's not because I've already shown proficiency that I'm selling 60 or 70 houses a year. And I'm going to give you a great career where you're always going to have business to do and always people to relate with. And some people want that life. And if you don't believe it, why are there so many more nurses than doctors? It's because so many people want to be close to something and they want to be impactful, but they also want a little more freedom and flexibility. And so, I mean, I've I've seen negotiations crush some agents, people who are really great agents, but they can't handle the emotional strife of being in that. And so you can keep people insulated. So they can choose to be a lifer, which is great. They can choose to be a graduate, meaning they did a minimum of a year. They showed competency in their role and they killed at least uh, 10 of them where they said, I, I can stand on my own. So they can graduate to being an agent on a team, earn not given. The third and final opportunity, this is my favorite one, is the empire builder. 
This is somebody who doesn't graduate off your micro team. They graduate up your micro team. So Shelby, if I had hired you and you served as an agent partner for a year and it's graduation time, I could say, all right, do you want to go on your own now? 100% commission. Uh, You're going to get a chance to do all these roles. Or do you want my role? Do you want to be the negotiator? Do you want to be the lead generator? Uh, And do you want to have a partner that's already built in? And I'm going to feed much of this because I'm working alongside you to bring in all these at-bats as well. I'm going to give you a little more stability and you're going to now run my micro team. That empire builder is this like magic pill because guess what? I, as the rainmaker, I'm now working like five hours a week. And I got a micro team working a hundred deals for me. My Shelby, my agent partner who's alongside me is now uh, negotiating. They're not doing all the showings anymore. They're getting their time back in their life, but they don't have to go and be a hunter quite like them jumping out and being a graduate on their own. And this little nuance piece, I got a guy in Kansas City, their average sales price, uh, they're just outside of Kansas City, average commission and sales price brings them to like 7,000 bucks a pop. This little micro team close to the Rainmaker, the guy's name is Ed Stroud and uh, on his micro team, he has his empire builder and then he has an agent partner underneath that. They're doing 100 deals a year. And Ed is netting $600,000 working five hours a week. Like he's literally doing the life that we're talking about because he's just found the right person that graduated up instead of graduating off. But everyone had a choice. There was always the yes when and everything was earned. You are making uh, my brain hurt in in a very fun way. (laughs) And you have great energy also. I love it. Um, At this point, what oh, thank you. what did we miss? I know, gosh, I know that you are wealth, like you have knowledge for days. What do we miss specific to this conversation for this audience? Yes. So, so what we did is 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 we laid uh, we laid the groundwork, we laid the foundation to say if this is a path that you want to go to. Uh, I my my job as a real estate coach and a guy that cares a lot about this industry is like I try to give away everything for free, and then people who just want more of my time raise their hand, and then I'm able to to build a career off of that. And so this is hopefully the start for people. Uh, I got some books you can read. I got a bunch of videos on our Hatch Coaching YouTube channel you can watch. You should definitely get the the realtor work out of the day so you can start implementing that. But I just make sure that whatever you do, keep your dominoes in the right order. Because if you get your dominoes out of whack and you try to do the wrong thing at the wrong time, it doesn't make sense. Shelby, the the final thing I want to say is this, is everything that we do in this industry is both an art and a science. The art comes from sharpening your sword and it comes from getting really great with people. This is a people game and it will always be a people game. Up until a couple of years ago, I didn't know that drywall and sheetrock were the same thing because I don't know anything about houses. I'm just a pretty face, you know? Uh, And so I didn't know anything about houses, but it didn't mean that I wasn't successful. It wasn't about the knowledge I had. It was about the people skills that I had. And if you can get great with the art of people, you have to swing a lot less times because your sword is so sharp. And so that's why you make sure that you are great with people first. And once you're great with people, then you make sure that your time is well spent. Once your time is well spent and you've mastered your time, then it's time to master leverage, right? The, the, the summation of all this is master your time and then master the leverage of a couple of people closest to your time. Deep, not wide. And when you can do that and put those dominoes in order, there's no doubt in my mind you'll make millions by working 10 oh, hours a week oh. or less. Okay, Eric, just to remind people real quick what, what you can do if, if they want to reach out to you. You know, you mentioned coaching, you mentioned a book, your YouTube channel, just a quick recap on that and the best place for people to reach out for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Hatch Coaching is the company that I have the privilege of being a part of. I put my name on everything like Colonel Sanders. I've uh, got the wee beady eyes and delicious chicken. But nonetheless, uh, if you are interested in anything that I'm doing, uh, our YouTube channel, we drop new content weekly there. So you can find that uh, for Hatch Coaching. Otherwise, follow me on the Instagrams. Uh, that's Real Eric Hatch. That's Eric with a K. Real Eric Hatch. And I live in my DMs. Uh, and we'll do whatever I can to help you grow your business. And it would just be an honor to uh, be a chapter in somebody else's book. Do you know the drill? If you want to hang out with me and the owner of the show, we are The Shelby Show and Erin Amuchastegui on the gram. We love hearing from you. And I hope you got a ton of value out of today's show. I know you did because I took a mad amount of notes. Eric, this has been so fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And Real Estate Rockstars, thanks for listening. (laughs) 